So my name is Peter Ngamau. I come from Kenya, from the eastern part of Africa. And uh, I work at Montana as a mathematics and economics teacher. But currently, I only teach mathematics. I have been at the school for the last 18 years. In fact, I just started my, time, my 19th year. So when we talk about teaching philosophy, we are talking about the goals, the aims, or the objectives, or what guides me into becoming a good teacher. So you must have this fact in mind before you decide how to approach your teaching. And my main goal is that I view students as unique. Each student is unique in his or her own ways. They come from different backgrounds, culture, and so many other differences. So it is very important that as a teacher, you understand that they are different so that you approach them differently. This guides you into determining the most appropriate teaching style, ways of keeping them motivated so that they do not lose the motivation. Because as we all know, mathematics is one of the most challenging subjects. So a teacher has to be very, very careful so that you don't make the students lose focus. And again, mathematics is a very important subject because it has a lot of application to real life situations. So you should have a philosophy that guides you into ensuring that students are able to exploit their full potential. So it is the role of the teacher to ensure that this happens. And uh, as I said at the beginning, students struggle in the subject, not just in Montana. It's a global problem. You go everywhere, teachers talk about how students are struggling and they try to share ideas. What can you do or what do you do to motivate your students? So on my own perspective, number one, I try to understand why are the students struggling? Most of these students come from different backgrounds, different educational systems teach mathematics in different ways. Sometimes students struggle because they are coming from a school where English was not the medium of instruction. Sometimes they struggle because they are studying mathematics in English for the first time. So I have to ensure that they acquire the vocabulary in English. Then number two, for me I believe students underperform in mathematics because they do not know how to study. Not that they don't study, but they do not know how to study. I talk to students, how did you prepare for the test? I spent four hours revising. Then I tell them, that is not the point. It depends on how effective did you study. And this is where the student misses the point. So first of all, I talk to the student. I make it a very open discussion. Can you tell me how you study? Be free with me because I want to support you. Through that, most of the times I discover why they struggle because they do not know the technique that can enable them to retain the concept. So I take them through different methods of study that have students used. I start with the least effective, whereby it just comes and goes. They do not have the capacity to retain those concepts. I take them through the process and then I tell them, you are underperforming or you're finding the difficulties because what you're doing is not the right thing. Not that you're not studying, I repeat, but you're not doing it right. Then after that, we have a plan. In terms of the plan, can you go and try this approach? Then we make a follow-up. We meet next week and then tell me, did you see any difference? And to be sincere with you, students come back to me and they tell me, I wish you had advised me earlier. I'm not even spending less time to revise than before, and it is working. I'm able to retain the concept. So I believe as a teacher, you need to know why are the students having these difficulties? Then how do you help? I know even if I was to ask you a question about mathematics, most students or most people say that mathematics is a boring subject, which is a fact. So I try to create fun out of that so that students enjoy coming to class they don't see it as torture. They are those who see it as torture. So number one, I try to make it fun. Don't just concentrate on the content that is being taught. In fact, sometimes students struggle in mathematics because they do not understand why they are doing it. I try to use a practical approach. 
where would you need these concepts in the future? So if the students see the value in what they are doing, they kind of develop some interest. Then on top of that, engage the students. Avoid monotony. Don't just be the one talking. Involve the students. Like sometimes I use something that I call student teacher and approach that students like very much. So what I do, I become the student. They become the teacher. They go to the board and they teach. Students fight to be the first one to be the student teacher. So it kind of becomes fun. They want to be there. And once a student is able to do that, they gain some confidence. And through that confidence, they start liking the subject. And with the time, the performance improves in the subject. And also this creates some connection between the student and the teacher. They feel accommodated. They feel at home. The environment is academic. They know that this teacher is there for them. They can go to that teacher with any question that they have. And then as a mathematics teacher, don't be, just be available to the students where you are, when you are in class teaching. Make yourself available. Like, you know, we have some tools that we can use. The students can reach to you even when they are at home doing their homework. I tell them, if you have a question, just send it to me on Teams. And if I have the time, I usually respond immediately. And for me, it has worked well. For me, that is a very, very important point. The teacher is not the master of knowledge. I believe that I can learn from my students. As I said, questions can be solved using different approaches. In fact, to be sincere with you, I've learned new methods of solving questions from the students. So through that, I gain from them. Although that has got nothing more to do with the feedback, like you can, you can give a, a survey to the student to find out how you are performing as a teacher. So this is to help you develop and grow as a teacher. Or if I give an assessment and the students do not perform well, that kind of gives me a feedback that there is a problem. The problem could be that the concept was very challenging. It could be that I did not teach it well and it gives me the message that I have to repeat. Something that I always tell students is that mathematics is like a chain. What you do now, you'll, do it, you'll need it later. So make sure that the current concepts are well understood, they're well covered. So I need that kind of feedback so that I can prepare them for the future. I don't want them to struggle in the future. And like when I give an assessment, my policy, even if you ask the student, I mark my test the same day. So that if I have them the following lesson, they always get their results. And then I ask them, how did you find the test? Maybe they can tell you that I think this question was so difficult. You know, once you do that, then you know that there's a problem in that. And it gives you the opportunity to repeat that concept. So in the process, you benefit because you know that maybe you did not approach that concept in the most effective way that was well received by the kids. So you keep developing. And for me, that is how I have grown as a teacher. I believe the students can make me a better teacher. Not that they're criticizing me, but they want to be to become better. I usually even ask them, is there anything you think I could do to make you perform better in this topic? I'm usually very happy to always repeat. So feedback makes you a better teacher. It makes you grow as a teacher. Otherwise, if you don't use feedback, then you get stuck in one step without progressing. And that is my approach. Uh, so for me, there are some tools that we use. Number one, the Teams is a very strong tool that we use because with the Teams, we are able to communicate. As I said, maybe a student has some problems even if when they are at home, you can still communicate. I can also explain a concept through a video call. So the student just feels like he or she is in class. I also use the OneNote. One note and uh, maybe to say something about COVID. Yes, COVID was really not a good thing, but I think it made us made some developments. Like before, I was just used to the use of the whiteboard, all things like that. But now I'm able to use the one note. So just I just use the beamer when I'm explaining. And the good note thing with the one note is that 
once you are done with a topic, you keep continuing. If a student is absent, then you can create a PDF file of those notes because it's kind of a permanent document. And then so you can help that student to be able to know what you are doing. Sometimes you can also record the lesson that you're teaching so that the student can view the same lesson so that they do not get lost. I also use another tool we call my iMaths. My iMaths is an online mathematical tool whereby you can give assessment to the students and you can be able to monitor the progress that they do. Whomever has not done, I can be able to monitor. So there are some tools that we can use to engage the students and I think it is working well. Maybe what I'm doing is not enough. I'm still researching to try and discover more. But I believe we really need these tools to be able to make learning more satisfying, more interesting, and more effective. I think I've gained a lot from working in Montana. And maybe something that I can tell you, I came to Montana, this was my first experience outside Africa. I had never been outside Africa before. So you can imagine the difference that Montana made to me. So I just applied as a joke. I think it was my job. I got it, I got it. So now I've become more international because I'm dealing with students from different nationalities. Also teachers come from different nationalities. I've been exposed to more culture. Maybe in Kenya I was just teaching in the local system. Most of the students were Kenyan, the teachers were Kenyan. So I just knew Kenya. But now I, I can say that I've become international. I understand different culture. I, dif I understand different communities. So Montana has really made me a different person. I'm also able to know how to approach issues from different perspectives. I've become more accommodative. I have become more patient, understanding what to avoid and what to do. Because sometimes you can say something innocently and it becomes an insult to a person from another community. So it has taught me a lot of tolerance. It has taught me a lot of flexibility. And that's why I'm always smiling. Because at least I know how to interact with each and every person. And uh, I'm always grateful to work at Montana. It's a special community for me. It has made me a different person and I have no regrets. And that's one of the reasons as to why I've been here. As I said, this is my 19th year. It means that I'm happy to be here. And I think I'll continue working here.